Governor Huckabee, is it time we raise the federal gas tax to start fixing up our nation's bridges and roads? Well, I think the uh, obvious answer is it's not necessarily that we raise a tax to fix what we ought to fix in this country. We're spending billions of dollars all over our country and around the world. But it may be time that we start spending some of those billions of dollars to deal with our own infrastructure. And the bridge isn't the only problem. Anybody who's flown lately, as I do pretty regularly in the commercial system, know that we have a complete gridlock. And part of that problem is that we've got a system of air traffic control that was designed in 1950, five years before I was born. We've got better navigation systems in our rental cars than we have running the airline industry today. And so, yes, we need to address it. It's not being talked about. And it's our bridges, our interstates, our sewer and water treatment systems. They're crumbling. They're old. We saw an 85-year-old steam pipe explode in the middle of Manhattan recently. And we have to start addressing building this country, Mayor, not everybody else's. Mayor Giuliani, how do you answer? In, in, in Minnesota, Governor Pawlenty, who vetoed a, an increase in his state gas tax, said now he may consider one. Is, is this Republican dogma against taxes now precluding the ability of you and your party to come up with the David, revenues that the country needs to fix its bridges? David, there's an assumption in your question that is not necessarily correct. It's sort of the Democratic liberal assumption. I need money, I raise taxes. Then what are you going to cut, wait, wait, sir? Wait, 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 what do you cut? Wait, wait, wait. Let me explain it for a second. The way, the way to do it sometimes is to reduce taxes and raise more money. For example, I, I, ran the city, I ran a city with 759 bridges, probably the most used bridges in the nation, some of the most used in the world. I was able to acquire more money to fund capital programs. I reduced the number of poor bridges from 5% to 1.7%. I was able to raise more money to fix those bridges by lowering taxes. I lowered income taxes by 25%. I was collecting 40% more from the lower in income tax than from the higher income tax. Or I'll give you another example. Senator Edwards last week recommended increasing the capital gains tax from 15% to 28% because he wants more money. Now, Senator Edwards hasn't had much executive experience. Because the reality is, the last time, the last time we raised the capital gains tax, you go back and check it, from 20, uh, from 20 to 28 percent, we lost $45 billion. There is a liberal democratic assumption that if you raise taxes, you raise money. We Governor. should put more money into our infrastructure. We should have a good program for doing it. But the knee-jerk liberal democratic reaction, raise taxes to get money, very often is a very big mistake. Governor Romney, do you want to cut taxes to fix more bridges? There's no, there's no question but that the biggest source of revenue for this country, if you really want to make some money in this country, really get some money so we can repair our infrastructure and build for the future, the biggest source of that is a growing American economy. If the economy is growing slowly, boy, tax revenues hardly move at all, and boy, you better raise taxes to get more money for all the things you want to do. But if the economy, if the economy is growing quickly, then we generate all sorts of new revenue. And the best way to keep the economy rolling is to keep our taxes down. That's why I propose middle-income Americans ought to pay no taxes on their savings. Invest in the future of the economy. Growth helps us provide the revenue that we need. David. Our bridges, let me tell you what we did in our state. We found that we had 500 bridges, roughly, that were deemed structurally deficient. Senator and McCain. so we changed how we focused our money. Instead of, instead of spending it to build new projects, the bridge to new, nowhere, new trophies for congressmen, we instead said, fix it first. We have to reorient how we spend our money. Senator McCain, you about 30 seconds. Uh, we passed a $50 billion transportation bill that had $2 billion in pork barrel earmark projects. $233 million for a bridge to nowhere in Alaska, to an island with 50 people on it. Not one dime in those pork barrel projects was for inspection or repair Senator of bridges. Senator you got 10 they seconds. Were, they were for pork barrel projects. I'll veto every single bill that comes across my desk and make the authors of those pork barrel And that projects. is the last the Iowa Debates, a special edition of This Week with George Stephanopoulos. Here again from Drake University in Des Moines, Iowa, George Stephanopoulos. And we are back now for the final half hour of the Republican debate here in Iowa. And we want to start out uh, this half hour with a question that came in over the Internet. His name is Sean Kennedy. He's from Leesburg, Virginia, and he had a question about Vice President Cheney. During the Bush administration, there's been a growing controversy over the role of the office of the vice president. 
As a candidate for president, what authority would you delegate to the office of vice president? And should those authorities be more clearly defined through a constitutional amendment? Senator McCain? Uh, having uh, been having uh, been considered for that post several times, I've thought a lot about that. Uh, <laughs> the vice president really only has two duties. One is to cast a tie-breaking vote in the case of a tie vote in the Senate, and the other is to inquire daily as to the health of the president. Uh, <laughs> I, would, I, would do, I, I really would do what some presidents have done in the past. Uh, a vice president brings a certain area of expertise and talent. Uh, I would probably assign some of those areas, it would be like telecommunications or some other important issues. So not as wide-ranging as Vice President Cheney had. I, 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 look, I would be very careful that everybody understood that there's only one president. Governor Thompson, you served in the cabinet with Vice President Cheney. Do you, and I heard of the implication of Senator McCain's answer there, do you think that Vice President Cheney had too much power? I believe that Vice President Cheney is uh, critical.